Hello, and welcome to week one, day one, of Da Vinci Tree's online learning. My name is Matt Roll, and I'm here with uh, Miss Kaufman over here. Hello, good morning. And uh, we are here every morning, as we normally would be at school, to do the pledge and joke. But before we begin with the pledge and joke, as always, we want to begin with uh, our announcements. And so our announcement for the morning is discussing the recent first place win at the SARSEF uh, Science Fair for our kindergarten class. Let's give them a round of applause. All right. All right. So, Ms. Kaufman, can you uh, tell us a little bit about your experiment that won first place at the SARSEF Science Fair? Thank you, Mr. Roll, uh, for mentioning our science project. They worked very hard on it. And uh, we did a science project on wondering if uh, you could taste food the same with smell as without smell. And so we found out that it is definitely easier to decipher what food is with smell by our graph and things like that. So we entered it in the SARSEF and we won first place. Congratulations. Um, Thank you so much, Ms. Kaufman, and again, a big congratulations to all of our kindergartners for winning first prize at the SARSEF Science Fair. That was just fantastic. As you may have noticed, Ms. Kaufman and myself are not standing right next to each other as we normally would. On our videos, we're going to be practicing something called social distancing. So kids, now that there is this virus going around, the COVID-19 virus, you want to make sure that if you are standing next to somebody in public, you are staying about five or six feet away from them. That social distancing will help keep you safe uh, from getting sick. And so as you watch our videos throughout the days here, you will notice that we are all practicing social distancing. Well, at this time, as always, it's time for us to get our joke of the day. And Ms. Kaufman is going to be telling us our joke of the day today. So back to you, Ms. Kaufman. For the joke of the day, it is, how do you know that hot is faster than cold? How do you know? Because you can catch a cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you're with us today, I want you to stand up, put your right hand on your heart, and face a flag if you have one. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I guess we're beginning, ready to begin our class. Hi, welcome to week one, day one learning. Our agenda for today is Number one, ELA. So we did, we're going to do story time. We'll review our parts of speech. We'll do some spelling. And then number two, we'll do some math. And then number three, we'll get some science in there. So I'm excited to get started. Action. Today we're going to be reading Dog in Boots. The author is Greg Gromley, that's the person who wrote the book, and the illustrator, the person that drew the pictures, is Roberta Angaramo. So let's get started. Remember, whenever you read a book, you always have to remember six things. Who is the main character? What is the problem in the story? Where, that's the setting, where does the story take place? When? When did the story take place? This can be as simple as, is it the daytime or nighttime or during the week? And then why? Why was there a problem in the story? And then the how. How was the problem solved? So keep those things in mind while you're reading, remember? Dog in boot. Dog was reading a brilliant book all about a cat who wore a pair of truly magnificent bo boots. When he finished reading, Dog put down his book and thought a, a little bit. Then he went to the local shoe shop. Hmm, this is a good time to predict. I wonder why he's going to the bookshop. Hmm, I don't know. Let's find out. 
Have you got any footwear as splendid as this? He asked, showing the book to the shopkeeper. I believe I have, said the shopkeeper, and brought out four just as splendid books, one for each of Dog's paws. Bow wow, said Dog, I'll take them. Dog was so pleased that he went straight home. Hmm, wonder who the main character is. Let's see, wonder if it's Dog or the shopkeeper. Hmm, remember the main character is in a lot more in the story than the supporting characters. So let's keep reading to find out. To dig up his very best bone. But the new boots were not all splendid or magnificent for digging. And they got so muddy that they looked quite awful. So, Dog took them back to the shop. Hmm, do you see the shopkeeper in this? I don't. I think the main character, the who in the story is Dog, right? Hmm. Let's see, I think we're already starting to see a problem, but let's keep reading. Have you got some that are better for digging? He asked. I have just the thing, said the shopkeeper. These rain boots are perfect in mud. It simply washes right off. The rain boots were wonderful for digging. But... When Dog went for a swim in the pond, they filled up with water, and he sank with a plop. Dog took them back to the shop. Hmm, what's the problem in this story? Hmm, do you think these boots are working out for them? I don't think so. Let's find out. Have you got some that are better for swimming? He asked. The best, the best thing for swimming, the shopkeeper said, are flippers. Look at him in his little flippers. The flippers were fantastic for swimming. Wonder if it's going to work out for everything. <gasps> but when Dog tried to scratch, they flip, flop, flopped around his head in a very unsatisfying way. Dog took them back to the shop. Have you got some that are better for scratching? He said. I'm glad you asked, said the shopkeeper. With these high heels, you can scratch and look rather fashionable at the same time. Look at, look at him in his heels. For scratching behind Dog's ears, the heels were simply divine. Hmm. Let's see. Unfortunately, they were dreadful to run in. He went flying head over high heels. Dog took them back to the shop. I think I'm noticing the trend. I think the problem, what the problem in the story is, hmm. I think it has to do with the shoes he keeps trying to get. See that? He keeps trying on different shoes, but they're not working out. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see if it works out. Dog took them back to the shop. Have you got some that are better for... Oh, we read that part. Whoops. All right. Have you got some that go a bit faster? He asked. Oh, yes said the, chop, the shopkeeper. If you want to go super fast, try skis. They go very fast indeed. I'll take them, said Dog. And he was gone before the shopkeeper could say, but only in the snow. <sighs> Did it look like it was snowy outside? I don't think so. Who knows if they'll work out? Let's see, when is the story taking place? Does it look like it's nighttime or daytime to you? Hmm. Without any snow, dog skis didn't move at all. 
he couldn't run or scratch or swim or dig. On his way back to the shop, Dog thought some more. Okay, he said to the shopkeeper. Hmm. Let's see, why is, well, let's talk about it for a little bit. Why is there a problem in the story? He's looking for shoes, but do dogs need shoes? I don't think so. I've never seen, well, I guess in the, when it's really hot out, dogs wear shoes, but most of the time they don't, right? So, let's see. So he said to the dog sheeper, keeper, I want something that's good for digging and swimming and scratching and running. Oh, nice and furry too. Do you have anything like that? No, said the, dog, the shopkeeper. But you do. They're called paws. Perfect, said dog. Dog was so pleased with his nice, furry, practical paws that he scratched all the fleas from his coat, ran after his tail, swam around the queen's leg until she got him to hightail out of there, and dug a big hole to rebury his very best bone. Finally, Dog went home and picked out another brilliant book to read. This time it was about a girl who didn't wear any silly boots, but she did wear a lovely red hood. Hmm, thought Dog. And then if you look at the title of the story, it's called Little Red Riding Hood. <gasps> what do you think he would look for next? All right, so how was the problem solved? I think Dog had the solution the whole time. It was all in him because he was just perfect, just the way he was. All right, so for our part of speech today, who remembers what a noun is? Hmm, I remember. I'm not quite sure if you do. So, click on the link so that you can listen to your favorite noun song. And then we'll talk about it after. Go ahead and stop your video and let's go back to the website and click on the link for the noun song. Let's watch the noun song. When you're done, come on back to the video. Now we know a noun is a person, place, or thing. Wonder if you can think of a person like a teacher or a principal. I wonder if you can think of a place like a school or your home. And I wonder if you can think of a thing like maybe a chair that you're sitting on, or a table that you're using, desk maybe? Hmm, I don't know, but now that catchy song is stuck in my head, so hopefully it'll help you remember too. Okay, now it's time for spelling. I'll read the words to you, but don't worry if you cannot see them or you don't capture them right away because there is a PDF link so that you can download them and work with them. So. Our words are another, company, mother, face, prince, pencil, circle, nice, yawn, reach, greatly, feather, phonics, cookie, once, there, certain, sought, edge, and our bonus word, October. Remember, this is a month, so you have to be very careful with it because there's always something that needs to be happening. It is always capitalized, okay? So make sure you have that capital in there or it's wrong. 
All right. What we are going to do with our spelling for today is pyramid words. My class, you should be completely familiar with this. If you're new, don't worry. I'm about to teach you how to do it. So, if we're, let's say we're working with the word nice. We are going to start with the N. So there's the N. And then I put the, the two letters N, I. Ooh, and now I'm adding the third letter N, I, C. And now I add that fourth letter N, I, C, E. And that's why we call them pyramid words because it kind of creates this little pyramid right here. Okay? So, don't forget, download that PDF so that you can write the words out and make them into your pyramid words. Okay, so we're going to be doing a review just so that we can get started. Today we're going to do 67 plus 24. We are doing addition with regrouping. So, remember, if you have a problem like this, it's the horizontal way, then we can very easily just write it out the vertical way. So, I'm going to be using blue for my tens and purple for my ones. So, if my number is 67, then I can go ahead and start writing the six, and then the seven, and then I'll put my addition sign just so it's already set up. 24. Which number's in the ones place? Hmm. I think the four is, so I'm going to start off with, remember, you have to line it up perfectly. So you're going to put the four right underneath the seven because they're both in the ones place. And then that two, that two's in the tens place. So my two is going to go directly below the six because that is in my tenths place. So now you can see that my ones are lined up and that my tens are lined up. And now we can get started. We always start off with the ones place. So now I can think about it. Seven plus four. Hmm, what is seven plus four? Well, I can say that we start off at seven and if I'm counting on, I put four fingers up. So seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Now I'm going to think about the number 11. So I'm just going to write 11 right here. That one from my ones place is going to go directly below my ones place, right? And then the one from my tens place is going to go above my tens place, so. And now I can start off and go on over to my tens place. And I say six plus one, six plus one, that one's pretty easy, that's seven. And now I add two more, so seven plus two is seven, eight, nine. So now my nine goes right below the tens place. If you are in my class, go ahead and log into your Khan Academy account. There are a few lessons for you to do. If not, if you are not in my class, then you can just go ahead and log in. We are doing grade two today, so it's okay if you haven't done this before. There's another video that you can watch to help you, but we are doing grade two, and then we're doing the addition with regrouping, regrouping section. Stop the video at this time and click on the link for the Khan Academy math assignment. If you are in my class, there is a link with a PDF so that you can practice your multiplication. Do not forget to practice your multiplication, please. We don't want to forget those facts. So, we're gonna start off easy and we're gonna be doing our tens. That's pretty easy for you guys. So don't forget to do your multiplication. We'll be doing tens today. Good. And action. 
Now for science. So, can you think of the smallest animal you've ever seen? Let's see. They're pretty common. You don't have to go to a zoo to find it. And if I just step outside, I'm pretty sure I can find it. It's insects! So, today I'm just going to be introducing the topic so you know what we're going to be talking about, and then we'll get more into it next time. So, let's see. If you take a look at these, they're a little bigger than the ones you would find outside, but they're a pretty good representation of insects, right? Hey, first graders, it's Mr. Roll here. I'm invading the end of your video for day one. Um, before we let you go, I wanted to tell you that Miss Martell is putting together homework for you to do every day. And so we need to make sure that even if she forgets to tell you in the video, that you're checking to download the day's homework and the day's assignments so that you can do it. Now, downloading the work and actually doing the work might be a little bit difficult. So you might have to ask your mom or your dad or, or a, a guardian to help you out. Maybe if you have a big brother or big sister or something like that. Um, if you have a printer, you are more than welcome to print out the assignment after you download it. If you don't have a printer, but you're using an iPad or a, a similar kind of, of computer or tablet, we wanna show you how you can actually use the tablet to, um, <clears throat> to, to do the assignment right on the tablet without having to print it. So I'm gonna show you this in just a second. If you are confused on how to do it, again, ask a parent or guardian, and uh, you can always watch the video more than once so you make sure that you get it right. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Let's go ahead and uh, let me get my iPad out. Do, 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 do. All right. My iPad's recording, so you should be able to see it now. This is cool. So first up, in order to get to your lessons, everybody knows that you got to go to DaVinciTree.Academy. That's our school. And so once we get in there, we go to online learning. Now, depending on what grade you are, you have to select your grade right here, but I'm going to use second grade as an example. So we go into the grade, okay? Um, let me go ahead and give you... Uh, so, so in the grade, we need to tap on the handout. Some of you have one handout in a day. Some of you have two handouts. So I'm going to tap on this handout. And so this one that I'm looking at is a word search, okay? Now, in order to do the word search on the iPad, uh, uh, you have to do something special here. Now, kids, if you have a printer, you can print this out. But I know a lot of you don't have printers, so I want to show you how to do this. So in the very top, we have that little box with the arrow sticking out. So I press the little button with the arrow sticking out, and I have to look for this little button that says copy to books it's a little orange button with the white book on it so i tap on that and then it copies into my books okay so now it lives in my books now if i want to actually do the uh, do the worksheet here i do not have to print it out if it's living in my books i just tap on that little pen at the top and i can choose like my color and the kind of pen that I'm using here, like if I want to use a highlighter, and I'm ready to go. See, I can draw on the page there, just like that. And uh, so I can start looking for words here. Okay, so let's say the word wood is a word that I need to find, and I just found it on the bottom there, W-O-O-D, good. So I got that first word, so I can cross it off there, just like that. And then I would just keep on looking for more and more words, okay? And so that's how we would uh, do your word search. Oh, I think I just found another one. I found when. Don't tell the second graders that I am doing their work for them here. All right, that's fun. All right, that's how you do it. Again, kids, you might need some help with this. So don't be afraid to ask your mom or your dad or your parent or guardian to help you out. So I hope that was helpful. Make sure that after you watch your lesson every day that you're going back and you're getting all the work done for the day. Okay? All right, everybody. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.